Hi dear audience, hope you would be fine. In this short video, we would be discussing about the insubstantialization uh, as a technique or the rhetoric of the empire which is used mostly to deter the uh, agency and resources and uh, existence, even the presence of the colonized people. Actually, in our previous talk, as I was talking about, but uh, due to some interruption of a caller or a visitor in my office, I could not make complete that video. Therefore, I uploaded that very short one, which was very introductory. Uh, but today we would be talking more with examples and uh, we would be explaining or sustaining our uh, uh, that claim that uh, how the post -col sorry colonials are the colonial masters sustain their rhetoric of insubstantialization as we have already talked about that insubstantial substance means having presence or something which is of the value uh, something which is of importance that's called the substance or the material necessity that's called the substance substantial and insubstantialization means that uh, to create someone without resources, to represent someone without resources. So even that, that technique, uh, a very good word which is uh, used for that insubstantialization is that seeing through the dreams uh, means the coloni colonial masters sees uh, their colonized peoples as the people without resources people without bodily existence as well. Uh, uh, so uh, they create, dream is charming. Uh, before going to furthermore, uh, I would relate it to from one of my personal experience uh, that what does, uh, uh, how the colonial master see the people from who are not from their sphere. Uh, I have been in England uh, and the University of Exeter and uh, for my PhD thesis submission I have to contact one of my external evaluator for my thesis. So I sent a, an email to that university that uh, I need your uh, consent for evaluation. Uh, I, I have been working with Paul Young but I was sending as I was unable to uh, uh, take him as a, my external evaluator. Then I uh, mailed uh, to one of his colleagues. So that uh, that he emailed me that he said, oh, that's very, that's fantastic. I would be love to see that the how PhD defenses, defense happens in your country like Pakistan. So he or she was very strongly willing and she, she was shocked that how it means even the PhD vivas are conducted in Pakistan. So it was very new one. And she said, even if you right now ask me uh, to, uh, uh, to have some virtual, some sort of uh, presentation or some sort of virtual uh, conference, she said that uh, I am ready to do that. So I recall that uh, it, it's not unnatural, you know, uh, actually we naturalize our world where we live. For example, the person who lives in Africa, he considers that the world exists, world does not exist beyond Africa and the whole world uh, is this Africa. Uh, because he cannot cross his national imagination, he cannot cross his uh, ongoing geographical national uh, imagination. The person who lives in India, he considers that India is the best world, this is the last part of the world. So uh, definitely he materializes, uh, naturalizes his context. And the person who lives in Pakistan, he considers that the the word is the highest and is the Pakistan. Uh, so uh, the colonial masters, if we come refer back to our context, that colonial masters consider that the world only exists in the West. So they uh, consider or they perceive the people 
and the geography beyond the western uh, from i mean people and the geography means they consider the both individuals and persons and the geography as a dreamy world and the people from person means we people are the dreamy people for them we are strange people for them and our uh, geography where we do live that's strange for them as well so they consider that these people who are coming from their margins they are without resources and their their country where do they, do they live that's also without resources while uh, you, you everyone know that uh, nature has created equal resources to the geographies for example if the west has some particular sort of uh, 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 advantages material advantages then they might not be that uh, having what the indians have so indians have their own natural resources minds and specialities while the western world have their own uh, so uh, now we come to uh, some examples from the fiction uh, that how this insubstantialization is proved by the literature who, who was written which was written by the uh, colonial masters so uh, as i talked that the western world people consider the people beyond their imagination as insubstantialization it has nothing to do with only the situation of colonialism to my prove my substance that shakespeare has uh, does not belong to the period of colonization but how shakespeare has created the character from the africa they 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 are the people of unsubstantialized people for example iago in that uh, uh, his play and uh, uh, even that uh, 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 the people from the africa which he has craved uh, uh, created as the slaves masters and even how he has represented the character of uh, cleopatra that's a very significant one cleopatra was from the east from the egypt so to to the shakespeare the egyptian word was a strange word the word without a word of chaos word of mysteries here i never means that uh, uh, that that the orient is a negative context means but strange and deep and uh, a uh, dreamy means that it is not the western world it is something which is different from the western world so uh, uh, even shakespeare has created the people of the africa and the indian as people different from the west one so if we talk about joseph conrad's the heart of darkness how he has created the world of mysteries of the strange people of that strange people with strange language with, with strange beliefs or religious beliefs and uh, a strange some sort of material resources as well for example when uh, what is the uh, they are very mighty words marlo says that in the heart of the darkness as horror 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 though his words are pointing towards that of the imperialist horror that the london is the uh, darkest city as it has uh, colonized the other people so his his horror refers refers to the imperialism but that is dual that is also on one level is also that oh english people do not come here over here this is the place of horror so even if it were to the both person so to a colonial i am going to interpret it that uh, to a colonial master the world of occupied land is the half horror to marlow to to a native england is the uh, place of horror uh, imperialist designs while towards that of the uh, uh, english people africa was the word of horror so both words contradict with one another on the difference on the 
डिफरेंस ऑफ आइडियोलॉजिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन एंड द डिफरेंस ऑफ द रिप्रेजेंटेशन फ्रॉम रिप्रेजेंटेशन वी मीन दैट द पर्सन हु होल्ड्स द पावर ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ही बेसिकली होल्ड्स द रियालिटी सो एज वेस्ट होल्ड्स द पावर ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन वेस्ट कंट्रोल्स द पावर ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो इट होल्ड्स द रियालिटी एज वेल so they, they, they that's up to the will of the west that how they do represent us similarly when we talk about of the kubla khan in our poem uh, st coleridge that was the victorian era, uh, era. so he also represents the, that uh, uh, that uh, doom of the kubla khan that uh, palace of the uh, uh kubla khan something that is of the dreamy and that is something of the orient uh, so, sort of um, uh, production so uh, it was very charming and dreamy for kubla khan so uh, at the same time it seems that it does not exist or and even though it exists but it is uh, of imagination so here kubla khan's charms uh, sorry the palace of kubla khan was charming uh, for the western people because it was away from the reality real is something else real is more preferable and similarly uh, the imaginary and the dreamy one uh, is unsubstantialized one so it is the rhetoric strategy of the west that it uh, creates the its uh, 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 margins its uh, 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 you may call it as the colonized people as a uh, insubstantialized creature insubstantialized geography insubstantialized ideology as well the people in the west say that oh what sort of religion do you have if we talk about that of our muslim islam as a religion so uh, colonizer people our colonial masters have been considering christianity as a superior religion over other religions including buddhism including islam including hinduism if you need some sort of uh, references from him then uh, you can read a passage to india where christianity was considered as a superior religion over hinduism and islam and where white race uh, means the race, uh, race of the english people was considered as superior from the uh, indians and the muslims in the uh, subcontinent and those similarly religion uh, polit politics as we know uh, that the whole eastern or the orient world is going to adopt the democratic forms or the political forms of the government of the west so uh, e even the western people considers that how what sort of the politics how you do the politics you do means every of for african country indian countries uh, uh, subcontinent the countries from the subcontinent they copy the political system of the west so all this is about insubstantialization uh, if you have any question you can ask me i would be there uh, to answer your questions thank you very much